Last month was the hottest ever since scientists have been keeping records. The deadly floods in Louisiana are being called a once in every 500 year event and the raging wildfires in California have forced tens of thousands from their homes. Some scientists believe these events are connected. Here to explain why is Jeffrey Kluger, Time Magazine's editor at large. Jeffrey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so we just me. saw there uh, the tens of thousands of absolutely destroyed acres there in California. California, we see the devastating pictures out of Louisiana. Why are we seeing these extreme weather events now? Well, there are a couple of things happening. First of all, it bears repeating again and again. Global warming is here, it's happening, it's unfolding, as you and I were saying earlier, it's unfolding exactly as it was predicted to unfold 30 years ago. We're seeing these high temperatures, and this year it's exacerbated by an El Nino effect in the Pacific which has caused global temperatures to rise some. And it's finally cooling off a bit, but El Nino takes about six months before its cooling effects, after it dies down, seep into the atmosphere. So this is simply going to be continuing. And an important detail is for every one degree Celsius that the Earth's temperature rises, the atmosphere is capable of holding 7% more water vapor, which means rain. Yeah. So when, when they call the flooding in Louisiana a one in 500 year event, what does that effectively mean? That effectively means that you have a 0.2%, 0.2% of that flood of that magnitude in that area occurring in any given year. A 100 year flood would be 1%, a, a 1,000 year flood would be 0.1%, but these numbers are losing their meaning. We've had eight 500-year events in just the last 12 months in the United States, in six different states. So when you have eight, eight events that are supposed to happen only once in 500, 500 years, years, happen yeah. in 12 months, we have a problem. Well, from coast to coast, the temperatures have soared, with July being the hottest in recorded history, the 10th month in a row to break monthly temperature records. So how do NASA and scientific organizations continue to track these numbers? It's a very important question. There are four basic organizations around the world that do this. There's NASA, there's NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the Japanese and the United Kingdom weather services participate mm -hmm. as well. This is done through a global network of satellites, of ships, and ocean buoys. And it's very important to remember that they measure both atmospheric temperature and water temperature because those two move in lockstep. There are a lot of a number of climate change deniers who say, well, there's been a bit of a pause in atmospheric cooling, heating rather, in mm -hmm. the last 15 years, so climate change must be slowing down. But all that means is that the water is taking up a little more of that heat. Mm -hmm. But heat is heat. Whether the air is warm or the ocean is warm, we're still feeling the heat. And it's been one hot summer. Jeffrey Kluger, thank you so much. Thank you.